were born during Vietnam. We were kids during Watergate. In our mid late teens for Iran Gate, now we're all grown up for the、uh, for Desert Storm. We've only ever known a government that doesn't tell us the truth. What are you doing here? I'm making a movie about the elections. What are you doing? Robert Downey Jr. What scares me is is, is the crossroads.、It's、such a pivotal time. Takes a look at America. Fear and denial on the campaign trail. Bye bye. And what he finds. So I hear you have an interest in politics. Yes, I do actually. I'm a registered Republican. Is one nation divisible? Who would you vote for if you could vote this year? With issues. If you don't do politics, politics will do you. And opinions for all. The true conservative view is everyone has control over themselves. You're talking about America. You're talking about baseball, apple pie, and racism. There is a religious war going on in this country. This war is for the soul of America. Pro-woman, pro-choice, pro-child. I think that all this is a lot of rhetoric. It, it takes cataclysmic events to really rock us out of complacency. If you give that much money, why can't you give just a little at least to eight? No, we need to give our youth the opportunity to run this country. The Cold War is over, and the new American enemy is the other America. Time is running out. The last party. Keep on the line. Keep on the line. During Watergate, in our mid late teens for Iran Gate, now we're all grown up for the、uh, for Desert Storm. We've only ever known a government that doesn't tell us the truth, and so we've been taking it in our own hands to find out our own truth. Probably about 10 years old when the Reagan-Bush administration got into office. So our view of democracy is pretty much completely comprised of that. Our generation is the first generation of people who government is not a force for good in our lives. You know, we need to give our youth the opportunity to run this country because all the older ones they didn't fuck the country up. I've been in a hurry for a long time. To achieve what? Recognition, appreciation, money, not truth. <laughs> I'm taking you into my hero's church. We're going on Charlie Chaplin Studios, which is now A and M Records. I'm going here for another reason, but this is like my church, and and I come here and、uh, ask questions and usually get answers. I won't say from who. And what interests me about Chaplin. It's not just so much that he was a comedic genius, but the fact that 
he seemed able to be a social critic and, uh, and creative at the same time. This is a stage. This is where the films like City Lights, Modern Times, The Great Dictator, they were all shot here. If you're going to spend all the time and energy to make a film, you might as well have it be something that really reaches out and does more than entertain people because, uh, because you give a lot of your life to do it, so it might as well really matter. What's my agenda? What's my agenda? What's my agenda? What's my agenda? <laughs> What's my agenda? I'm only starting to get a sense of this, and it seems like the bottom line is educate, ed education. Ed it was good up till then, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, just cut for a second. Let me gather my thoughts. Like, why don't I want to look in the mirror? Because, like, I'm uncomfortable with what I see sometimes. Because I know myself too well. I know I have to change. And you know what's that? It's that fear of change. Fear and denial on the campaign trial. You are standing on a ladder in case people think I'm stuff in Jonah Clinton, just once, can we ask you one question on the youth vote? Do you tend to have anyone under 30 address, uh, address the convention to talk to for, the, for the youth vote, Youth of America? We are going to have some young people uh, in their 20s address the, address the convention. I right. know that there will be some. Okay, I'm available next week if you need any extra help. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Hey, have a good vacation. I promise a chicken every pot. I promise him science and progress will lead to all man's happiness. I promise that if I get caught telling the truth, I will lie my way out of it. <laughs> For me, I call it, you know, like the good boy and the goat boy. You know, those, those parts of me that, uh, that are only out for my own instant gratification. Delayed gratification is not something that I was raised with a, a concept of. It's important for me to stress that it's not a frog, that it is a goat, and it's just, I, I haven't honed it yet. If you repress the goat, then he'll nail you. I think it's interesting that we have these two out here. One's a fool, which represents the youth and the, and the, uh, the, uh, openness to new experience and wanting to jump off into new things, almost foolhardy. The young spirit is ready to take off in the new phase of life. I knew that this had to do with your visiting the conventions, but I thought, I kept getting the feeling that you had either had been a president or very close to a presidential candidate, and I thought, oh, that's natural that you were discovering who you are on this trip, aren't you? There is a movement in this country, and I think really on this planet, toward uh, self-realization, if you want to call it that, toward spirituality, um, which is, it's come about really out of crisis, because we are a planet in crisis. My father came in and said, everything's fine, and we went, okay, and then we went to sleep. I think probably an accurate uh, analogy is that of a dysfunctional family. We have this idea that we are a society in which a lot of dysfunctional families exist, but I think we're missing the point that because of that, we are a dysfunctional country. My mom and dad were the, the kind of couple that people always said would never split up. They'd always be together. They were the perfect couple. And then when I was 12, uh, well, I'll never know why. It's really, I guess, none of my business. I have my own ideas, but they split up. And my sister went with my father, I think, out to California, and I moved to New York with my mom. Hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> Why did you make me ugly and shiny? Look at me. Who did? You did it. <laughs> I have zits, and I'm shiny, and I'm not happy. You mean you're blaming that on me? Yeah. I think two-thirds of him was awake for a long time, and a lot of what we did to ourselves, he's done too, and he's missing some fucking pistons. I'm okay. 
wrong day. Let's talk about the election, Dad. Fuck you, the election. <laughs> Listen, it's so obvious. If you, if you don't vote this, this is the worst I've ever seen it in my life. And if you don't vote this time, you know, you shouldn't even be alive. My dad was an underground filmmaker. My mother was an actress. Our house was a place where we came and watched the dailies of whatever uh, film my dad was making at the time. And, well, you know, everyone gave me some foot rubs and, you know, smoking pot and incense and... I think that uh, a lot of us did things and thought it would be hypocritical to uh, not have our kids participate in marijuana and stuff like that, so we thought it was cute to let them smoke it and all that. It was an idiot move on our part, a lot of us, to share that with our children. But look, he's okay now. <laughs> I can't find my goddamn car key. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't find the car. So anyway, there is something to that, but generally I don't I don't know. I'm just happy he's here. That's all. Were you ever worried that he wasn't going to be here? Many times. What do you think they? That's none of your fucking business. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I think it's great that you're doing this. I never would have figured you were a political animal. I'm not. I'm just start, I'm just starting to get into it. Well, I'm learning some stuff though. You know a lot now. What about? Did you even vote in the '60s? I don't remember you no. getting in the polls. You didn't. No, no. I voted for Kennedy because he had a great-looking wife. Yeah. And there was no. It just looked so obvious to me that Nixon was a drag. I mean, it was that stupid. Uh huh. Since then, it hasn't been much. But this country's been in such bad form for so long. We just got to hope whoever wins this just can rise to this occasion. There's a running maid. Uh -huh. This is very important. Interesting dreams. No, there's a boner right now, though. Sleeping next to Josh does that to you? Yeah. It, when someone says Al Gore to you, what just goes through your head? Do you have any reaction? Pineapples. <laughs> Better learn up on all this legislative, judicial, and executive nonsense. So I can make sense of these nonsensical candidates. Constitution and the United States government. Key terms. Impeach. It's four years each, but the 26th Amendment is very important. What was that? It lowered the voting age to 18. Thank you. Like right there. Around there? Okay. What are you doing here? I'm making a movie about the elections. What are you doing here? Well, I'm making a movie about you at the moment. Oh, how's that coming? All right, this is Payback's a Bitch. What's your... Uh, Bill Davis. You having a good time? How you doing? I don't, I don't know what to make of it. It's like a game show. It was like being in, a, in an excited mall with a lot of different uh, food stops. Young people have become so apathetic and indifferent. They're like couch potatoes vegetating before the boob tube, you know, mesmerized by MTV 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Silver spoons in their mouth big enough to offset the trade balance between Japan and the United States. And all they got to say is, I, me, I, me. For young America, do you know who their leaders are? Axl Rose. Mm -hmm. Chuck D. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, or Michael Jackson. And what these people do is great. They're entertainers. Michael Jordan, he's a, he's a, he's a great artist. He, I mean, but I don't, I don't think, I think it's unfair that we should expect Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan to, to affect or to lead us out of the wilderness for the, the problems that are in this country. Can we make a difference? Sure, yeah. It, the attitude is if you... You don't understand. She, he says, yeah, we can't make a difference. She says, you can't make a difference. The rest of us say it. You say it. And the rest of everybody else around here says, we can't make a difference. Well, there's, then you got 10 million people saying, we can't make a difference. And those 10 million people can make a difference. <laughs> people are involved in on a 
grassroots activist level, but we know nothing about electoral politics. And I thought that we don't have power because we're out there on the outside while all these people on the inside are doing all the work but doing the wrong stuff. So I want to get people my age and my generation more involved with electoral politics so we can work from the outside and know how that inside works. Well, I was in school one day, and we were getting ready, a bunch of friends of mine were getting ready to go to a young Republicans meeting because they didn't have anything else better to do. And the lady said, well, I'm not young. And I looked at him and I said, well, I'm not Republican. And so... Why? Why am I not Republican? Yep. Honestly? Uh, okay. Because I think they're assholes. <laughs> We went over to Madison Square Garden, a bunch of us girls, and um, we introduced ourselves to the delegates, and everyone was there, and we told them all about Goldfingers and asked them to come on in. So, I hear you have an interest in politics. Yes, I do, actually. I'm a registered Republican. People generally would think that anyone who's concerned enough citizen to vote will so you just take interest in a party would be a more conservative individual. And yes, I am very conservative in, you know, my real life. You know, this is the fantasy life. This is the stop. It's nothing more. Girls trying to make that scenario work, you know? That whole, it's, the, it's like your first acceptance of, of women and sex and... Somewhere along the line, I became really intimidated by the idea of um, of a real trust and closeness, you know. I mean, that would show up in, like, you know, not being able to get it up or flipping out. If you're at a place where you're really, you're uncomfortable with life, you're like, ugh, you're so spawning, you know. When you see the idea of a vagina, it brings up a lot of fucking resentment. <laughs> This is very intimidating to us men. It is? Yeah. Oh, but you shouldn't be intimidated. Not you. Oh, okay. Women's Action Coalition, huh? Yeah, that's only six months old. It was born out of the frustration women felt and kind of galvanized by Benita Hill, Clarence Thomas appearing. But we held our first direct action within a week of forming. God gave us the right to choose, why can't other people? Unless you're like a straight white male, I mean, you're basically fucked. Men are always the superior, and they will always be considered that and get paid more than a woman. Because women have to sweep the nation, after the House, clean the Senate. It seems you've really been able to mix your personal and political life. How have you been able to, to make that happen? Well, you know, that's a real good question because in this kind of, uh, this, what do I call it? Uh, uh, it's like somebody might say there's no virgin in a whorehouse. It's kind of hard to talk about virtue when everything around you is going in the other direction. Uh, it's a very superficial uh, kind of bond that is created in politics often driven more by power and money uh, and glory and that's not enough to pull people together there has to be a connection at a deeper level keep hope alive keep hope everybody don't give up stand tall i love you i mean awareness and education are the only ways to prevent aids right now it's ridiculous. People are dying and they're too embarrassed to say the word sex and homosexuality. I mean, ever see George Bush talk about anal sex? Do you think that everyone's going to have to know someone that died from AIDS before people will really start taking action? Well, certainly when there's like a phase to it and you know them, it's going to affect you a lot more, you know?
sometimes you get fed up and you get really frustrated when you're doing service work and you're watching the people that you want so much to save die and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And I get fed up with that so I go in the street. And today when there will be no more AIDS, no more tears, no more pain, and no more dying. What would you want to say to President Bush? He can give thousands of dollars to the wars when we go and fight battles and stuff, but he says that he has no more money. If he can give that much money, why can't he give just a little at least to AIDS? This is where it all happens, huh? Wow, how's it going? Pretty well. There's a lot of gear in here, huh? Yeah, we don't know how much it must have been works. I know how to do this. Tried to get that right in the middle of her face, but it just doesn't look the same. What do you think of Ann Richards? I love her. How oh, come? Huh? She's funny. She's a great governor. Uh, she is a recovered alcoholic who uh, knows who she is and what she is. Thank you. God bless you. Quite a 12 step platform this year. We have all these recovering men and women. It's kind of like One Nation Under Rehabilitation. If I would not have wanted to get well, if I would have continued along that same pattern then I would have died, you know. But my brother and my mother instilled strength in me, which we, we all do. My brother has said to me over the years, when times get tough, it doesn't matter how tough they are. It doesn't matter, because you can make it. It just doesn't matter. Just don't worry about it. Uh, it's a real simple, it's sort of like the just say no deal, you know. People say, oh, you know, you can't do it by just saying no. Well, the fact is, you can if you just say no. And once you say yes, it gets a little tougher. Well, the same thing here. He would always tell me to, quote, suck it up. You know, I've been through treatment, and when you come out and, you know, you've got some guidelines of how to live life, and then you go back out on the streets, and it's like there's very few people who are really applying that kind of stuff in their own lives. Today's the unconventional smoking. Democrats are in town having their convention, so we're having an unconvention because there were two admitted pot smokers on that ticket. Meanwhile, we're both being thrown in jail, and they're running for a government office. When you get stoned, that's like a little death, you know? That's why this guy's singing, you know, about the politicians. They should get stoned, because that's going to be a little death for them and a little death for their egos. Well, for me, you know, growing up in school, it was just, you know, smoking pot all the time, you know? And then you went to Samo High. A lot of the friends, drugs in my family, drugs in a lot of my friends' families, you know. Drugs in the 70s in general, at least from where, where I was at. And, uh, and it started really young, you know. And abuse comes in when you don't understand what, what drugs are supposed to be for. Or like my dad says, when the ritual becomes habitual, it's time to quit. You would rather sell drugs to get a car than go to school because you could do it quicker. Whoever got the most money, whoever got the nice cars, whoever, whoever fucking the most girls. Et cetera, et cetera, man. It's like a thing, like, you know, come on, it's the thing, it was the thing, and it's still a thing. It's like somebody, you know, I seen somebody else doing it, and I wanted to do it. it, it, it on and on and on, it's still going on to the day. It ain't getting no better. I got shot nine times, twice in the head, what happened? and I lived. Killed a couple of friends, an aunt, 
You know, they try to rob me. I'm making a lot of money, selling drugs, stick up kids. They, they try to kill me, take me out. They try to kill all the witnesses that was there so nobody couldn't talk. But it happened so I lived. Lucky to live, you know what I'm saying? I know 25 the life, that's what I'm facing. But who bought the drugs in the nation? Been going on from generation to generation. Now you want it to stop. So you'll hire more cops to get popped. Money and drugs is all politics. Lawyers and judges on the road to get rich. We just some young brothers caught up in the system's mix. Kept both eyes on the fight and still couldn't tell it was fixed. Big A with final words to say. I know I'm guilty, but hey, who killed JFK? This is your first time, right? Yeah, it's my first time. I was, uh, I thought yesterday was just a circus. Nothing was said, nothing. It was just like bread and circus, Roman dole. I mean, these people were one after the other, were getting up there and just splurging out this bullshit hypocrisy about inner cities, uh, uh, homeless, and they, no, nothing concrete was being offered. What about this, having a convention? See, some people say it's outdated. What, what purpose does it really serve besides having the acceptance speech and all that kind of party nonsense? What do you think? I think it's like publicity. It's like a big commercial. Everybody rapping like it's a commercial. Acting like life is a big commercial. So this is what I got to say to you all. Be true to yourself and you will never fall. The televisions are our public airways. They're ours. And they've been leased to uh, basically the 23 corporations control America, the American media. So there's no way that you can have a serious debate, serious discussion, or serious campaigning uh, under a private system. Yeah. My name is MCA. I've been coming to where I am from the get go. Generally speaking, uh, it takes cataclysmic events to really rock us out of complacency and certainly the hypocrisy that we see here today. What are you guys all doing down here? 3-4. Three, 3-4? Four. Three, four? What's going on up there? Civil unrest. Yeah? This whole place was like a war zone. Cars on fire, buildings, places were getting looted. Why? Because we all got fed up. Just fed up with the old police state out here. Do you think every one of those guys would fuck you up without thinking twice about it? Oh yeah, drop of a dime. Why? Every one of them? They want a power trip. Put That's us a blank guarantee. Statement. Guarantee. Put us with guarantee. If I walk down the street with this beer in my hand by myself, harboring nobody, I guarantee at least one or two cops out of a posse, at least ten, will at least come up to me, be like, "How you doing?" Boom, throw me on the wall. Knock the boy down out of my hand and proceed to search me for no apparel. Just like they're saying as a blanket statement, all you guys are drug dealers, none of you guys are creative, none of you guys are doing anything to help the community, you're all fucking it up worse, you're just trying to get a fast buck. It seems like neither of you are willing to give much on each other. Let's just say it was an old record back in the days called Revolution Won't Be Televised. Here you got the revolution. We get tired of the government coming down here like a big bunch of Johns, treating us like hookers. Fuck us one day, give us money, and then step. Okay, that's how they're doing us. Because you know that in middle America, Americans seem to be afraid of guys like you. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, they're afraid of what they don't know about. See. That's, that's the thing about this country. What they don't know about, they go, they either try to take it over or kill it. Do you think that these riots help or hurt? Or yeah, I think it hurts or ourselves or... to be burning down our own neighborhoods and destroying, you know, burning buildings with people in it and looting our own stores. But I can understand the frustrations, on the other hand, to the people. You, I mean, when you talk and talk and talk and you, you write your congressman, you do all those the avenues, the right, you know, you, you use the things you're supposed to use in a de democratic society, it seems that doesn't work, especially for minorities or whatever. Have you lost some friends up here? <sighs> lost a lot of boys, man, a lot, a lot of boys. There's not much hope out there for a lot of kids, you know, it's, it's like, as it's, it's serious as a heart attack. Now they talk to New York, where Eleanor Bumpers was killed. New York, where Michael Stewart was killed.
killed. New York where Yusuf Hawkins was killed. New York where Marcus Garvey preached. New York where Malcolm X preached. New York where Adam Powell preached. And they bring us two southerners with a southern agenda. We say no justice. What do you want from Governor Clinton? I want Clinton to address the issues. If he wants to be the president, he should be the president of all the people and address all the pain. Police brutality, criminal justice, racial violence, infant mortality. I don't want him to throw out an economic plan and act like that we don't have criminal justice problems. Yes, Mr. Wilson, you're very careful when it comes to him. Denzel? Yes. Here in America, Racism is interwoven into, the, into our fabric. I mean, you're talking about America, you're talking about baseball, apple pie, and racism. And, 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 a lot, and most of the time, racism is tied into economics. But I lost my job. One just went. What was that like? It's horrible, man. I mean, it was horrible, man. Real horrible. Once you get a job, man, you like you somebody. You feel good about yourself, you know? You go in there, do your eight hours, come out, go home. You feel good about yourself, man. You ain't gonna tell me you got the technology to put that man on the moon and bring him back. Then tell me that you can't get, that I can't have no job. I can't have a place to stay. Got people working on Wall Street, making all the money in the world, go home to their new home. They feel like they were all secure. They wake up one day like I woke up, and sleeping inside of a bridge or sleeping on a park bench. Realize, man, America ain't the dream that they thought it was. America has changed from being the land of the American dream to the land of the American nightmare. This isn't a country based on freedom, it's based on slavery, you know, and, and there's so much racism and crap like that going on here that it's, it's almost not cool to live here anymore unless you're just, you know, a stupid ignorant sheep just bleeding out in the field and saying, oh, ignorance is bliss, you know. That's not what it's about anymore. This country's going down real fast. I mean, you ask the people watching this movie, how many of them own MX missiles? Chances are none of them will say yes. You ask them how many of them own VCRs, they'll all say they own VCRs. See, America makes the wrong thing. We make missiles. We don't make VCRs and stuff like that. So, our economy sucks. If money is evil, then that building is hell. This is the most obnoxious group of money-hungry, low-IQ, high-energy, jackrabbit, fucking wannabe, big-time, small-time, shit-talking, bothersome, irritating bunch of motherfuckers I have ever had to endure for more than five minutes. And I never really learned. The 80s for me was like, keep buying, keep spending, you're making a lot of money, keep going for it, and I'm fucking tapped, man. I'm really pissed off. I'm really pissed. If you look into a paper and you saw classified sections, there are hundreds of jobs that are offered to people. If you don't want to get up yes and, and no. you want to be lazy, yes and no. I can't see, Steve, I first of all, bullshit. Job. First of all, if I pay taxes, why should I give somebody who's not working, quote, who years ago were called bums, now they're called, now they're called homeless. For a guy to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, sit in the corner, drink beers and wine, and not go look for a job is a bunch of bullshit to me. Why should I pay my tax for that guy? I pay a lot of goddamn money when I pay taxes. I think it's bullshit. You don't deal with the guy on the street. We see dollar bills, trades, money, prospectuses, things on the street going up, up, up. We see lines going what up. What goes through your head when you see a homeless woman on the street with two children? Actually, uh, it's really upsetting to me because when I first moved to the city, I really, really, really 
upset me, and, and I it doesn't and so much I'm, I'm totally desensitized to it. What about milk and milk and all the fucking I love them. Yeah, yeah, but let me tell you something. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because you know why? The guy made a lot of people a lot of money. A lot of people, a lot yep. of money. He also ripped off my grandmother. So what? Uh, so what? <laughs> you're great, but you're you're a fucking mercenary. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? You're the green beret guys of Wall Street, and it's like devil may care. Women and children first. Take no, no, them all. No, no. I mean, Listen, you know what I mean. Pull. Let's slow down here. All right. I have a wife and three kids at home. Okay. Okay. Materialism is good. Greed is good. And we ought to get greed is good. And and see we can agree on Why is greed good? Greed greed makes the world money makes the world go around. Money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. What's the root of all evil? Well we could talk about it later. Okay. Anything for money, right? Greed is good. 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 Our economy has been weakened fundamentally by 12 years of conservative Republicans' supply-side policy, so-called. In fact, in fact, supply-side was just another version of the failed Republican dogma of 65 years ago, then called trickle-down, which led to the Great Depression, and it has failed us again. There's a lot of people walking around with a lot of air in their heads. You may or may not be one of them. It's hard to sift through the bullshit and see what you really are, you know, trying to fight for. I'm trying to get back in touch with who I really am. Is it working? <laughs> I feel better. I feel better. Are you looking stupid sitting around in your jockeys or whatever they are? You know you gotta sit on your nose. I know that there's a lot of imperfections going on in my life, but I'm trying to be comfortable with them. You want the boots on too? But my socks are wet. Can I wait till they dry? You have a break. Come on. Look at him. He's completely manipulated. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see what it says. self-respect. I know it's going to say that. Should I leave it? You're supposed to eat the cookie. All right, I'll eat the next one. The world is always ready to receive talent with open arms. <laughs> See, what you don't know is that I might have been doing that as a protest. Ah, protest against boredom. In which case I would have been protected under the uh, Bill of Rights or something like that to be able to do it. Yeah. Who would you vote for if you could vote this year? Clinton and Gore. Yeah, how come? Well, I don't know. I just have a feeling that they're going to keep their promises and things like that. Mm -hmm. are, your, are your parents Democrats? No, nah, they don't vote. No, nah, it's just that they don't, they don't want to get into this stuff. There's what do they do for a living? My mom's a teacher. My dad I hate. I don't know. I just yeah. don't like my dad. That's understandable. They're divorced, of course. Yeah. I'm scared. Because if he sees this, he's going to kill me. We'll protect you. Why would he kill you? I don't know. Cause I tell him I love him, and you know, I'm not. I'm telling. I'm telling lies and everything. Cause he, you know, he's making my mom and 
make mine look miserable. Dragging everything along. Yeah, I remember when my parents broke up, I, and I stayed with my mom. It was real rough for us, too. I felt like I had to kind of, like, I had to do everything all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. To drag. Sooner or later, you move out, get your own place, you know, whatever. Yeah. I love my mom, so I just want to stay with her. I want to say something to every child in America tonight who's out there trying to grow up without a father or a mother. I know how you feel. You're special, too. The trailers, the Clinton trailers. Yes. No, no, that's in the press area. So I've got Robert Downey. I've got him right here. Hold on one second. Do we know where we're going? This is the man. Do we know where we're going? Now that we have changed the world, it's time to change America. Basically, it seems like everyone says that they're going to, to change it for us. And, uh... Okay. And it uh, seems like Clinton's the guy, but then Brown got up and went on, all these people well, having a Brown signs. It doesn't really make sense, but what I will say is that I don't know if any of them are really going to change anything for me, but I would like to change. I'd like to get a sandwich. Maybe this morning. Okay. Uh, Hi, are there any sandwiches in here? Yeah. Nothing? Okay. Yeah. Nothing at all? No, no, food. no free food? No free food. All right, thank you. It's okay, bye. Okay. Them, the liberals. Them, the poor. Them, the homeless. Them, the people with disabilities. Them, the gays. We've gotten to where we've nearly themed ourselves to death. Them, and them, and them. Excuse me, where's the sandwich bureau? Thank you very much. Very exciting, Benjamin. Hi, I loved you, and chances are, thank you. Uh, I, 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 uh, all comes together now, one fell swoop. Oh, no, not this. Oh, hi. How are you, doing? Good, how'd it go? Did it seem like it went well? Good, I hope you enjoyed the, the night. Elizabeth, hi, how are you doing? Come on in. Do you have any sandwiches? Can I have a sandwich? Thanks. Do you have a sandwich? Thanks. I'm kind of exhausted. Shrimp and cheese. Oh boy, I'm starving. I'm sorry. I just want to get a sandwich if I can. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I still believe in a place called hope. Wow, we put Mac. This is the 90s. miles for Clinton and I saw the way we were okay how's that <laughs> that's what put the camera back on me that's all here because we have to change because they're right I I, I I would hope don't mock me I'm going to mock you you're going to mock me, me you know mock me doubly who was Clinton your first mock choice me doubly. it's a great film and you were brilliant in it. thank you very much you never think what? you've done what is my so choice you. what other choice is there your first like voting for Al in the primary <laughs> there's no one else come on <laughs> You had a position in the uh, convention earlier today. They took your hat away. What happened? That's right. They took my hat away. We were uh, escorting the film crew around. You mean me and my buddies? That's right. And uh, you ran into Oliver Stone, and he invited us into a suite. And uh, we had no idea who suited it, so we went in, took the film crew in, 
And now the story going around the operations is that uh, me, Mike Evans, busted into Ron Brown, the chairman of the party suite, and knocked over his wife to bring in the film crew. <laughs> She's just mad because we Ouch. stole her sandwich. <laughs> That's right. She wouldn't give us any sandwiches. Now, you were saying some interesting stuff about your opinions of uh, Clinton on the way down the escalator. Remember that, Dan? That's right. I think uh, that Clinton doesn't have a prayer of a chance. And the reason I think that is uh, I think that anybody that... Uh, that, that commits adultery shouldn't run for president of our country. We don't you know. Hey, hey, hey. Not that it bothers me personally. It's just that the Joe Six Packs America aren't for, going to stand for that. And the same thing. The same thing. The same thing. The same thing. It's the same thing with the marijuana. It's not that he did it. It's how he handled it. Each time he screwed it up, and he handled it. I agree with that. I agree with that. But I don't think that deserves to Why did you call him a buffoon? I think that the main thing Clinton lacks is he has no passion. Hey, hey, I'll let you talk, all right? Compared to most of the countries in this world, we have no choice. The Democratic and, and Republican parties, anywhere else, would be one party. Let's blow up brains out. No. We have to start somewhere, don't we? Yes, yes, I'm Let's make it the end of Taxi Driver. We'll all blow up brains out. <laughs> like start thinking about some of the long haul things, you know, kind of the, the marathon of life rather than the sprint. Now being married and having found like the right person, and, you know. For me, getting married was about the ultimate idea of two people being in this ideal state that I always said, my God, to be just excited and creative with someone and, and you know, just general, a general sense of well-being about life. The only way to have a friend is to be one. In bed. In bed. <laughs> with intimacy comes responsibility. It's frightening to think that everything that you do to yourself or to others around you affects so many people. Someone tries to rip off my TV yesterday. Now, I'm married now. I have things to protect. I don't really care if they take my television. That's just a sign of the times and that things are rough and they need money for drugs to forget about the times or they're just hungry and they're desperate. But what gets me going is it makes me want to go make sure that I like know how to use my gun. And then if someone, if someone fucks with me, like, there's part of me that says, take him out. and into music. Yeah, you know, when I make songs like about, you know, violent songs, I, I say, well, look, you know, you could go pick up the gun, you can go rob somebody, but it always comes back around to you, you know. When, you know, our, our uh, songs carry over, I figure, well, you know, the truth is the truth. And the ones who don't like it, I figure, well, that's, it's just like medicine. Medicine never tastes good, you know. Uh -huh. It's good for you, but it don't taste good. Now, when you were, uh, when you were in, in the gang, 
uh, I would imagine the same some situations arise where you did some stuff that you might have of uh, might regret. Yeah. Well, I I should rephrase that. Nah, not actually nah. Because I, I never, I was the type that I never went out and caused the trouble. I was always the one where I was in the neighborhood and they came and they shot at me or one of my people. So I was like, well, you know what, fuck that, let's go get them back, you know? All right, so actors are politicians and politicians are actors, we're sure of it now. <laughs> You know, I'm in the entertainment industry, and we are, we're, we're starting to get a little upset with this cultural elite destroying uh, America's traditional values. Robert, if you look at what Time Warner did in putting out a, uh, a recording called Cop Killer, which directly threatened the lives of 600,000 lawmen, the people that you and I call 911 when we need help, that kind of activity creates an enormous sense in the minds of the American people that we've got a serious problem in Hollywood. Let me think. Wait, wait. Let me think. Downey? Is that it? Is it Junior? Right? Is it Martin? No, it's not Martin. Robert Downey Jr. We're sick and tired of you all portraying us I'm on sorry, TV. When you mean you, or who are you referring to? You're well, not referring to me, are you? Well, I'm specifically speaking of white folks. White America. When people started riding in L.A., they wasn't mad and upset because black people were killing white folks. Yeah, we've been killing white folks for over 400 years. And your wars. They wasn't mad because we were killing white people. They were mad because we was killing white people without their fucking permission. You know, half a young America, we're just still trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. How can we stop the killing in black America when you white folks bring in the guns to black America? There's no black man named Smith and Wesson. That is your name. So if you want to do something for us, take out your guns out of our community and let us know that you mean something from your heart because you've never done that for us. You all are in a privileged position yeah. to make change because white people will listen to white people. So you all need to go with them, need, need to go to your white leaders with the program of change. We can't go to them because they think that we're just crazy and jungle buttons and like the man say, they're afraid of us. So why don't you go to your people and do your best to make change? But if you do that, you will never make another movie in Hollywood. Boy, 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 killer. I'm that motherfucking goddamn nigga. A brother that's tougher than any other you cover. The one you don't want to take home to your mother. Fuck a loose group. You're approaching music and your art. You know, it doesn't pull any punches. And the message is that you feel that Rodney King is a sellout. Right. Directly. He's straight up a sellout. Because if you're not, you know, if you're not trying to uh, lead the black struggle, you're trying to contain the black struggle. And to me, you know, when black people started riding in L.A., that was the most attention we ever got from the United States of America and the rest of the world. He gets his dumb ass up there and say some shit like, why can't we live together when we haven't been able to live together for over 400 years? Is this your area? Is this where you're from? Yeah. Wow. I mean, anywhere they let us live and shit, that's why I live. I mean, in 12 years, ain't, ain't much changed at all around this motherfucker, man. We still got horses and shit. I mean, until we overthrow the fucking government, as it's, it's, it's no future for black and white, black, all black people, all white people, Hispanic people, Asian people, nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because if we can't have then y'all can't have either. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 if we can't live right, if we can't drive nice cars and live in fancy houses, then you can't have it either. And brothers are waking up to this shit. All around the world, same song. It, it's just not abandoned buildings and run down uh, uh, homes and stuff in uh, L.A. This shit is right here in Houston, Texas, as you can see. come back within our lifetime and that these days that we're in are leading up to that you know climactic event where Jesus himself will come back out of heaven and take all the Christians away from here.
one world leader is going to rise up who is going to be the Antichrist, and he's going to promise everyone peace. But unfortunately, this man is going to deceive the world. Hey, can you guys hear me seriously? The Secret Service guy's here. I don't want to get shot. You're stuck. Hello? The reports of the death of the religious right are greatly exaggerated. I heard that you cause trouble in a different place. I don't like trouble. It's not in my genes. I don't want trouble, so that's why I didn't let you. Why didn't you let me? You were with him. And what did you hear we did with? What trouble, what trouble, trouble did you hear we caused? Trouble. I don't like trouble. It's not a matter of not liking you as individuals. I don't know you as individuals. I just don't like trouble. And if you guys bring trouble, I don't want it. So you stay out. There what? was no trouble. What I've does, I'm sorry, what does trouble mean, sir? You're going to have to look that one up and figure it out yourself. I'm so glad I'm a living in the USA. I'm so glad I'm not some communist gay. Let's stop <laughs> Lord, I pray for your protection. But you said you came not to destroy lives, but to save lives, Lord. So we are people that are positive in our approach. We are concerned about the society, and we want to be a people pro-life because you are the one who brings life and life more abundantly. Amen. Let's give Jesus the hand clap. Amen. He's not ashamed to take on the liberal media in defense of conservative values. Stand Quayle. They said that I was criticizing single mothers. Single mothers are constantly struggling against the American family. And many of them have no hope. There is no place that is not a place for such a demonstration. AIDS is killing America. There is no place that is not a place for such a demonstration. Thank you for your support. The eyes of Texas are upon you. The eyes of Texas are upon you. The eyes of Texas are upon you. Just pause for a moment to reflect on what we've done. so that we may make America safer and stronger for all our people. And may God bless the United States of America. because it's your friends, it's the people you're going to school with that are going to be dead in another 10 years if you don't get involved now. You've got to fight it now. You've got to work with every part of the government, everybody on the street, everyone you know, your family who thinks that everyone who's dead just is worthwhile being dead. You've got to do it or you're going to lose everyone you love and perhaps yourself.
two times that my heart has sung and both these things was at the AIDS rally in New York and at this protest today. How about the protest? And that's because you have people that are dying to tell the truth. Every seven minutes somebody dies of AIDS. And that was the first time to me when I actually thought about it. Like when I'm at night sleeping, every seven minutes someone's dying. I think Robert has gone through the same thing that all of us have gone through on this film. We've seen it now. You've decided that you need to stand for something, that it's something you believe in. And maybe through this you've come to the point where you're ready to say something and you can use this opportunity to have an effect and when people see you they'll think that maybe they should do something that they should get involved that they should help to create change you know the cold war's over and now uh... the america's new enemy is its own the liberals the media homosexuals uh... minorities uh... women who want to be empowered you know so if we could say the cold war's over and the new american enemy is the other americans If God has a plan, it's a, I better end the Cold War. There's too many nuclear frictions. If I get rid of that, maybe these little pinheads can figure it out. There are a lot of them, and maybe they can figure it out. And uh, they got to vote for the fucking shit kicker. Get him in there, and he'll rise from his shit kicker occasion to the occasion and do all the right things or try because he wants to be like Kennedy and be a good guy and uh, the planet will be saved just in the next.